Outside the Box Reviews, this time it's war. Figure Wars. Today we are looking at two versions of the Alien Queen from the movie Aliens. On the left we have the brand new NECA Alien Queen Deluxe figure, and on the right we have the McFarlane Movie Maniacs Wave 6 Alien Queen. Now I have previously reviewed this Alien Queen from McFarlane, and full disclosure up ahead, this thing is a little battered, a little abused, and not quite intact. So there are a couple parts of this figure that I don't actually have to review for you, but I'm going to try to give these two the best comparison I can against each other. And we are looking at two figures separated by an entire decade, so there is a pretty vast gap in technologies used here, but we'll see how they really stack up next to each other. One of the greatest challenges of pulling off the Alien Queen in plastic is she is a very top-heavy figure with very, very tiny, strangely shaped feet. So, of course, you have to have a base for your Alien Queen. And McFarlane's is pretty nice. I actually really like the design on it. It has kind of the graded floor like you would have had inside the colony. It's kind of a panel down the middle with rivets going throughout. And, of course, you do have two peg holes that you would peg her into. The figure's feet has little spikes permanently attached that will plant themselves nicely in here and supports the queen very well. Now here at the end of it, you could see an area that looks like you could snap on another piece. This is a piece I am missing. This was an accessory of having a colonist gooed up to one of the walls and had a chest burster effect. Really wish I would have had that piece. Would have been a nice accessory to have along with this one, but mine's lacking it. Now I go on with a much more subtle approach. We get a clear acrylic piece of plastic that is shaped like a giant A. I don't know if that's supposed to be A for aliens or something, but it's an A or a V, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it, but it's a nice little solid piece of plastic, very similar to their clear display stands that they sell for individual figures. Up here at the top, we have a raised area with a hole in it, and then NECA's queen comes with two different metal rods. Now, these are to let you put the queen at whatever height you want, so you can either pick the long one to have her standing very upright, or the shorter one to have her menacing some of your smaller 7-inch figures. Either one will simply peg into that hole, and they give us a big U-shaped clip. This is another piece of clear plastic. It's kind of a ball-jointed end up here and of course a hole on the bottom this pegs right on top of that stand and i've seen people attach this clip to the NECA Queen in a variety of places. I've seen some people put it around her neck or different parts of the torso or even just use the metal pole itself. What I find best is right here behind the secondary arms, there's a little indentation that will actually kind of snap the ball into place. And I find it easier to remove the clip and then just install the stand underneath it and then pose the Queen from there. Observing the sculpted detail on these figures from my backdrop is a little bit of a daunting task, since both the NECA and McFarlane figures are just absolutely massive. But as far as sculpt goes, I think McFarlane did a really good job. Figure looks pretty much how it should. It has the nice translucent teeth up here in the front, the very wrinkly, ugly looking head. It has the membrane sculpted in here on the side. It's actually a rubberized piece coming down to the bottom of the jaw. That's more membrane going on there. Queen's crest or crown is beautifully sculpted. Lots of little details throughout it. Very intricately done. Some scratches and lines up here at the top. It flares out at the back. Even from the underside, it looks great. A lot of little details, very bony looking. Coming down the back, we have a nice spinal ridge and then we have these three kind of tubes on each side very much like the small aliens it's got this almost like seashell looking piece coming off the back very much fitting with that Giger biomechanical look up here at the shoulders we have a large ridge and a little spike coming off the upper arm there you have the tube looking neck down here this is actually rubberized because of the articulation arms are very well done lots of intricate little sculpted detail just like everywhere else the hand looks great as well very tiny little claws on there the little indentation the cut near those extra digits and it just makes it look even more weird and alien. Lots of holes through it as well. Now another piece I'm missing on mine is the secondary set of arms. It appears they would have pegged in via a ball joint. Mine are not there. With McFarlane's queen, the right hand is this very open, kind of gripping gesture, while the left hand is kind of this odd curled under closed hand, which I don't really understand what it was trying to be, but it's very odd looking. The very sunken in chest and pelvis here, the kind of wings coming up over the legs. More great sculpted detail going down the legs as well. 
well. And I'm gonna say it right now, McFarland's feet actually is one area where I think it excels over the NECA version. The toes are able to look nice and long and gross looking. With NECA's, they kind of had to add articulation in and it made them look a little stubby. Of course, we have the pegs coming down for the stand and the high heel and back. And then we have a very nicely sculpted tail coming down the back with its spiked end. NECA's queen is also beautifully detailed. The head looks great. We got some more of the membrane going on here just like McFarlane's did. The translucent teeth on it and translucent membrane, which is really nicely done. If we look inside the mouth, we have the inner jaw in there and that is removable. So the one I just had in is this short little jaw here. Once again with translucent teeth, looking very cool. And you could swap it out for the extended version, which is even cooler looking. More translucent teeth. This one is open as well, whereas the other one had more of a shut jaw. In the back, there is a keyed peg, so we know which way it lines up. I think it actually goes this way with the shorter part of the jaw on top. Peg that jaw in and it's just a monstrous sight. As you come to expect with NECA, they do use a variety of materials here. We do have the normal hard sculpted pieces, but we actually do have some soft bits around the head. The very top of this kind of crown here is rubberized, so it's probably not going to scratch your paint as bad as it might when we get to the articulation, but the rest of it is a hard sculpt. The crown is beautifully done here, beautifully sculpted, just gigantic, much larger than McFarlane's version. Great sculpted detail in here, looking very, very biomechanical, Giger-esque, even though Giger did not design the queen, and very similar to McFarlane, lots of great detail on the underside. Now, instead of just having the sculpted in tubes, the queen actually has her spines on ball joints. You have to peg these in yourself when you get the figure, so they are actually movable. We'll get to that with articulation, but it's kind of nice since they can get out of the way of the crown. We do have her spinal ridge coming down the back as well. Big spike at the top of her shoulder. Lots of great kind of bony looking detail throughout the body. Kind of skeletal looking neck. This one actually does have its little tiny arms, which look great. Little three fingers on there. Look just so tiny and creepy looking. Larger arms, of course, have the great amount of detail on them. All the cool biomechanical stuff. The hands are well done. Very spindly, spidery looking. Both hands are in an open pose, which I think is more fitting to the queen. Got her queen pelvis going on down there. The spikes up the top of the hip and at the back bent leg. Feet are also nicely done, but like I said, the toes come off a little stubby on here. Though, you don't really see her feet too well in the movie so these could actually be much more accurate than McFarlane's but I just kind of like McFarlane's look a little better and of course we have her heel spikes in the back as well nice little kind of membrane pieces on the leg too these kind of empty spaces make it look more skeletal and creepy and this queen's tail is just absolutely glorious beautifully sculpted with a great spike at the end a very beefy tail as well it must be said that NECA's figure is also much larger than McFarlane's and I think it's a case of McFarlane toning some things down just to make it a smaller figure because if you look at them head to head their heads are about the same size but NECA goes crazy when it comes to leg length tail length the size of the crown the size of the spikes everything on NECA's just seems larger and of course I have to kind of break the bounds of my backdrop here but this is the best I could show you guys of how much bigger NECA's version is it is absolutely huge compared to that McFarlane version when it comes to the paint job on these figures, the plus side is I don't have to turn them all around to show you all the different paint apps. It's pretty much what you see is what you get with them. But I don't know which one I prefer more. McFarlane's version is a lot more subtle. The entire figure is basically done in a gray plastic. There are some darker shading bits that are bluish black. There's even some lighter areas that are a lighter gray brushed on there. I think it's very effective and it works really well for the figure. It does leave it looking a little on the bland side, but to me it looks like the correct color scheme for the queen. I always picture the queen as being mostly black in coloration. One place where McFarlane doesn't quite excel is the fact that most of their paint on here is a matte finish. And it leaves the queen looking very flat. She doesn't glisten or gleam like NECA's does. NECA has a beautiful gloss over the whole figure. And it really does bring out that slimy alien grossness. But on the other hand, NECA has hit their figure with a very, very heavy blue dry brushing effect. This figure is also very dark. It's a black figure but they've covered it in this very light blue dry brushing. It's almost a grayish blue. And to me, it doesn't quite feel like it should be there. NECA has also added areas like here on the neck where there's a great copper quality to it. And once again, the aliens having that biomechanical Giger design, that copper just really sets that off and makes it look that much cooler. The other area where I think NECA really hit it out of the park with this paint job is the teeth, the clear plastic. And while it's not a paint choice, it's a plastic molding choice. 
Theirs is much, much cooler looking than McFarland's. And we're on with a very dark plastic, so when the light hits it just right, you can see that they are translucent. NECA's just look like they are clear, but they've got all this gunk on it from eating whatever aliens eat. And they look nasty and gross and real. And that carries over to the inner jaw, which of course McFarland doesn't have. And even these membranes on the side of the mouth here, just looking really, really top notch. When it comes to McFarlane's articulation, well, it's a movie maniac's figure, so you probably weren't expecting much anyway. McFarlane has a ball joint at the back of the head, so you can move side to side, up and down with it. It actually has a pretty good range of motion. I thought it didn't, and then the joint actually kind of snapped into working for me. So, you actually do get a good range there. It has the rubberized kind of section here on the side, the membrane, so you can get a good range out of it, but just be careful not to overstretch it. Inside this neck, if I remember correctly, there was like a bendy wire or an extra joint where you could could actually move it, but mine is actually broken. There's also a ball joint at the base of the neck. That is also broken. You can see it's bobbling a lot just because of both the material it's made out of and kind of a subpar glue job I did there. The arms can swivel forward and back and also go out to the side, which is pretty good for a McFarlane figure. Actually has a really good range going out to the side, but we don't get any elbow joints or anything. We just get a swivel at the wrist. I assume the smaller arms would have had ball joints here at the base of them. I don't believe they look like they had any other joints. We do also get a ball joint here at the waist so we can swivel side to side as well as go up and down a little bit but the weight of the queen doesn't let it really stay up so there's no real point in that up and down motion. She has a swivel at both hips which really you just use for putting it on the base and using it to pitch the figure up and down depending on how you want it standing. Nothing else in the legs and then we do get a bendy wire at the tail. The tail also has a peg at the end so it will just kind of peg in there and swivel at the base of the tail and then you can move that bendy wire however you need to to get the queen posed how you want her. NECA, as you'd expect, goes really far. The mouth is on a nice hinge, so it opens and closes. Of course, here it's limited by the tongue, but it would close all the way. The membrane moves with it. The head's on a ball joint as well, so move up and down, side to side. Really good range there. There is also a joint here at the back of the crown where we could slide the crown forward and actually have that effect from when Ripley first discovers the queen, where the head is covered and it's just sitting there panting on its throne, which is really cool. Now, I believe in the movie the head actually slid back into the crown but here the crown just slides forward over the head doesn't really matter because you get the effect one way or another and it is however just based on the way the queen's designed a little awkward to use that articulation bit it's just kind of hard to find a place to grab her and move it the neck has a joint in the middle of it a ball joint so it'll go up and down as well as side to side similar joint here at the base where it connects to the body so we can go up and down side to side as well as rotate her spines here on the back are all on ball joints so they will move move on their own. Really, you're mostly just moving them to get them out of the way of the crown, and they do seem to pop off a little bit as you move it, but they pop right back in, and you can just adjust them as you need it. The arm has a swivel forward and back, as well as a hinge at an angle, so it's only this direction, this kind of 45 degree to the body motion you could get in and out, but it works pretty well, and the swivel is very nice. The elbow has a nice joint in it. It bends almost 90 degrees, and then you can also swivel at the elbow. The wrist, you can swivel as well as hinge. Once again, and the hinge only operating in the single direction, so you have to have it lined up with that. But then you could swivel as you want to. The chest arms also have a hinge in them, so they can move in and out on that joint as well as swivel. We have a bend and swivel at their elbow and a ball joint for their wrist. We have a ball joint at her waist, which I find to be mostly useless. It doesn't really move very far. It won't rotate at all. And overall, it just doesn't seem to do a whole lot for the figure. But maybe it's just something I need to be a little braver with and move a little further than I'm moving it now. But does not seem to be a very effective joint. The hips can move forward and back as well as hinge at an angle. Now the one thing I've noticed with the hips is the angle is different for each leg. This leg moves at kind of a 45 degrees to the body pointing upwards if that makes any sense. And the other side it's about 90 degrees removed from that so it's going downward. It's kind of an odd choice but I wonder if it's something to help you get her into walking poses a little easier. And the legs we get several joints. We get her main knee which has a nice ratchet. The hip has a nice ratchet as well. We'll also swivel. Then we get another ratchety bend here at the back bent knee as well as another swivel. Foot 
is on a great hinge joint, so it'll go very far down, very far up, as well as swivel side to side, and the toes as well, a swivel and a hinge. I think the real star of NECA's articulation is this tail. Tail, just like McFarland's, will swivel where it connects to the body, but the awesome part about it is how heavy and beefy this bendy wire in it is. It's just such a strong bendy wire. Most bendy wires, you move them and they kind of pull back a little bit after you let them go. This, you bend it, and it's pretty much there. The other plus side to this is while a lot of bendy wires feel fragile, this really doesn't. This feels like it'll last a long time. Once again, having to break the boundaries of my backdrop here, we have the McFarlane Queen, alongside its NECA offspring, the Alien Warrior, and Sergeant Craig Windrix here, our Marine. And honestly, I believe the McFarlane and NECA aliens are roughly the same size, and the McFarlane and NECA Marines are roughly the same size, though NECA's versions are able to stand much more upright as they are here, as opposed to McFarlane's, which were usually stuck in a crouching stance. But we can see that McFarlane's McFarlane's is still a little on the small side. And, well, what can I say? I bring a NECA's queen at her full height using the extended longer stand, and well, she's barely even in the picture here. If we go with a more tilted angle, you can see just how massive NECA's queen is. While the fully standing tall alien warrior came up to McFarlane's shoulder almost, here it's just barely at the level with her hip, and our poor little marine here isn't even up to her waist. In some places, the McFarlane and NECA Queen are the same size, but when it comes to the length of limbs and the torso and all that, it's just amazing how much bigger NECA's version is. And I must say, having these two aliens side by side, I kind of wish I hadn't slept on that Series 2 redone Alien Warrior with the blue paint, because obviously it would go with this Queen a lot better. But still, I love the paint job on that Warrior. And I guess by doing a figure war and comparing these two figures side by side, I'm kind of doing a disservice to the McFarlane one. As soon as I got the NECA version, I put the two side by side, I had to see how they stacked up. I just the figure nerd in me needed to know. And I posted on Twitter a picture of these two side by side and put the caption, there is no comparison. And there really isn't. NECA's version is spectacular. It's huge. It's beautifully detailed, beautifully painted, even if I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the blue tones to it. It still looks freaking cool. And she's just absolutely huge. This is the Alien Queen figure you need in your collection if you are an Aliens fan. So NECA's Queen gets an amazingly high recommend. I don't even know where to go from there. You need this figure. Yeah, she's pricey. Yeah, she takes up a ton of shelf room. Don't worry about it. But on the other hand, the McFarlane version, granted, the prices you'll be paying for her now, there's no reason why you wouldn't go for NECA. But she's not a bad figure. She really isn't. And I'm actually surprised comparing the two how much, while she's small and not as flashy and not as well articulated, she's still a solid freaking figure. She's still very well executed. The sculpt is nice. I think it helps that she's a figure that I wouldn't pose a million ways, even with this neck one with all the options. I'm gonna probably put her in the pose she's in now, put her up on the shelf, and mostly leave her alone, for now at least. And the McFarlane version, even though you can't do a whole lot with her, she just needs to be there and be huge. And she does that pretty well, just not as well as now. But seeing that there is like a decade between these figures, McFarlane still gets a recommend. The McFarlane version is still a good figure. It's just not nearly as cool as this new one, which you couldn't expect it to be. There's no way that it could have been as good as the NECA version. In the end of these videos of Figure Wars, I always ask you guys to comment below. Let me know who you think wins. Do I even have to ask? I'm pretty sure I know what you guys are going to say, but I'll put it out there. Anybody wants to defend the McFarlane figure and say that it's the better figure somehow, let me know. And the NECA one has me super excited for yet another reason. NECA, of course, keeping on with the Aliens line. I'm waiting for Bishop and the rest of the new figures to hit stores. I'm waiting for Ripley next year very impatiently. But next summer, we're hitting the freaking power loader so we can have this bitch take on, well, hopefully Ripley. They're saying the power loader is coming without a figure, but pretty certain we're getting Aliens Ripley at some point down the line. Hopefully we'll see her at Toy Fair maybe next year. And I cannot wait to have these two squaring off on my toy shelf. This figure has made me clear off a separate shelf just for Aliens figures, and now I have another shelf for Alien, Prometheus, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, even though those two at the end there are pretty limited. But I now know with NECA going this route, Aliens 
had to have its own shelf. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username outside the box reviews, where I post a ton of pictures of this alien queen and other figures that I've added to my collection and other just random crap. And also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, it's been their outside the box reviews. Game over, man! Game over! You get a little side to side rotation. Ooh, wait, that's new. Ha! Huh. Awesome.